Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the questions that were asked in Infosys company. So let us get started without wasting much time. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But before we get started, let us thank our subscriber who has shared us his experience and his questions so that it can help to others who are preparing for interviews. So I encourage all of you who are attending interviews, please share your questions so that it can help others as well. And the first question that was asked or you know, the company is obviously Infosys, role is Tableau developer. Skills, I do not have complete information, but all I know was that you know, it was primarily for a Tableau developer role. So we can expect a Tableau plus SQL, obviously. Like, uh, apart from that, there can be you know, some other skills that might be required. So the first question that was asked is about Tableau public platform. Now this is something, an interesting question that was asked. The interview panel uh, you know, opened his or her Tableau public platform and asked to walk through the dashboards he has created. Now that is why I was stressing a lot, you know, in my previous videos or you know many videos in my previous. So create your Tableau public profile. One thing that we all want to do right now. Okay, but it's not like you know you're simply creating. You know, have uh, you should be aware of what type of dashboards you have published you know what are the things that you have created in there okay like that so because if an interviewer panel is you know asking you something like this like you know explain or walk me through the dashboard that you have created you know you should be in a state that you are able to explain that okay so make sure you are you know doing that next is obviously a working knowledge working knowledge on Tableau public will always add value to it. Like, you know, how can you save your reports to Tableau public? How can you download it from there? You know, what is the difference between Tableau public and Tableau desktop? So these are some things that you should be aware or you are expected to be aware of. Okay. Because these days we are getting some questions on Tableau public platform as well. So ensure you are spending some time in either creating your reports on Tableau public or in you know, a creating your Tableau public profile. Okay, both are important. Now the second question is, have you used blending and what are the issues you have faced? Okay, now this is one question that has been asked many times. Like whenever we get question about blending, we say that, you know, when we are using different data sources, we, we we go with the concept of blending. This is one answer that I've been, that we have been answering throughout 2023, right? But think uh, from the data perspective or from the organizational perspective, why do I need data from two different data sources, right? Because I'm already spending so much of, you know, effort, money and all in getting my data into a proper system. Then in that situation, why do I need a blending case? Okay. So, and what are the issues face? So example, I'm just uh, thinking uh, you know, uh, widely here. Assume you have a sample superstore. So I'm connecting to that here and I'm taking my uh, order date here and I'm converting that into exact date here and discrete as well. Now, if you observe order date is the date on which your order was placed. Now it is not mandatory that every day we should have an order, right? It is like every day we can have an order, not like we should have an order. So that's why if you see here on first and second, we do not have any order, but on third, we have an order. So that's why directly the date printed is on third one. Likewise, if I scroll down on 16th, we have order and on 17th, we do not have any order. Next is on 18th. So one day is again missing here, but client want details of every date, like your calendar date. There is no missing date here, right? Even though, you know, uh, nothing is happening on that, that date should be printed somewhere, right? You know, stating that no sales happened that day. So how are you going to show that? Okay, so like the complete data I need, okay? So we can create one default set like that in that situations also we can use blending concept to get the complete data. Okay, so that is one uh, use case that I wanted to talk and that's about blending. Okay, so you can try to, and what is the issue face over? So most common issue that we face is, you know, uh, 
see this is this type of issue like i'm trying to blend data from two different data sources one is excel okay if i go to my data sources uh here I have name, age, salary, and siblings. And in another data set called as file one, I have name and sibling two, okay? And I'm trying to bring in age and I have blended on name, okay? So here it is not able to get which record to be picked, okay? So that is why it is showing us this is star mark. Now, how are you going to fix that? So we should, we can establish relationship or blending at multiple levels. That's how we can solve this. Okay, so this type of issues you should be aware of and how the data works behind this also you should be aware of. Okay, so again, one question that you can get uh, on this is maybe you can comment down the answer if you know what uh, is the type of join happens in blending. Is it inner join or left join you can comment your answer in the comment section okay now third is how to get maximum date from an historical data set assume you have a, a data set we can take the example again same example here we have sample superstore right so in this if i want to get maximum uh, max date what is that we can do we can use lod expressions we can use max function so that way you can get maximum dates here, okay? So yeah, you, if at all I want to use it in an LOD uh, method, what would be uh, my calculation? You can simply write max of order date, that's it. It should give you maximum order date. So parameters used in your organization, again, this is one area that I have always asked you to focus on we should be able to have at least five to six scenarios ready with respect to parameters. Even if I wake up you in your middle of sleep, you should be able to give me answer for this question because parameters are you know definitely used or most widely used in real time. Okay, my scenario can be different from yours. Your scenario can be different from someone else. But we should know, like you know, our YTD calculations. We have seen so many use cases, YTD, you know, last n months, last n days, right? So Y O Y calculations like that. Okay, so there are like are obviously top and and bottom and so this type of calculations are possible or if scenarios can be implemented using parameters. So make sure or you know follow my Tableau parameter video where we have discussed I think ten scenarios. So you can focus on that and you can try to leverage that and you can also explore Tableau public to see if there are any scenarios where parameter is being used and you can try to see if that works for you. Okay, but it is an important question to focus on, to practice on and to implement on. Okay, again, YTD calculation in historical data set. YTD means already historical data. So YTD means what? First, we need to ask the customer what is our YTD date according to him. Based on that, you would need to build your calculation. YTD means maximum year that is present in your historical data set is your YTD or how are you going to calculate? So first we need to know here what, what is your current year in the historical data set. And based on that, you can build the logic here. So if we have created a dedicated video to find out YTD, PYTD, MTD and all. So you can watch that video. It is a detailed video explaining you how to build the logic for that and how to take the base. So I'll just paste the link of this uh, in the description box and maybe you can go ahead and watch that. Next is again using parameter, how to toggle between different categories. I think this is also pretty much easy. So for that, um, let me try to create a category here. And I'm taking my region here. Just I'm trying to build uh, a view here and I'm trying to take sales here. Okay, so we got a bar chart here. I'm just trying to swap it and make it entire view. So all I'm doing is I'm trying to create uh, a parameter here of, uh, again, you can create integer or string, whatever you want, but I'm creating a string parameter select uh, called category. 
and I'm doing it of a string type and I want a list of values and those values I need it from my category. So I'm just going to select that value. I got all of that and I can simply click on OK. OK, so now that parameter got created. I'm just showing that and we need now a calculation. So I'm just writing P dot select category. OK, so I'm writing my category is equal to select category. That's it. OK, apply. OK, and I'm just dropping this on my filter shelf. Taking only what I need now. I'm able to toggle between different category items. So this is one thing you can tell or there are many ways we can do. You can always uh, you can also put uh, all the category items on the top and you can create a parameter action to toggle between different categories. That way that is also possible. OK, so. That is the question on this uh, and again important question exact roles in your current organization. I think this should be technically the first question or the initial questions, but I'm just trying to put it here. So this is very important and this is something that we can plan and prefer prepare for. OK, so your role in each project will differ. Maybe in for one project you are working as a support executive. OK, or like, you know, you're working on a production support. So what would be your role here? OK, and then if you're working for a testing project, OK, what would be your role here? If you're working on a development project, what would be your role here? OK, so you have to cover all of your points. Like what are the activities that you have dealt with in your current project like requirements where you part of the requirement gathering where you pro, uh, part of the design process okay did you uh, build the design on the own or someone has given you the input for that like that how did you, you not know, test your reports or who tested the reports who took care uh, or migration activities. So you need to talk about all of that or all of these roles, important points in your this point. Okay, exact roles in your current organization. Okay, so do comment in the comment section if you need a detailed video on you know, this exact roles with respect to each project. I'll, I'll make one video so that you are aware of that. Next, if I go to my next question, how will you do a performance record or testing in a dashboard? So there are two methods. One is we can do it at a server level and we can do it at a Tableau desktop level. Okay, so all you need to do is, you know, go to your Tableau desktop under your help. You will have uh, settings and performance. And here you have an option called as a start performance recording. So once you start, you can use your Tableau desktop to perform regular activities, something like this, and maybe you can change it. Now, whatever actions that you are doing, Tableau is trying to compute behind the screen what is happening, how much of time it is taking to get the results and all. And based on that, Tableau will compute and it will give you results. Now, once it is done, you can go to help again, settings and performance, and you can stop performance recording. Now, once this recording is completed, Tableau will create a workbook. You have to open that workbook and analyze where the problem is and fix the issues depending on that. Now see here it is giving us, it has created one workbook. So computing layout, it took maximum time, right? So which means there should be some issue with how I am my, uh, my layout is working or your calculations, all of that will be, you know, given here. So analyzing your workbook is one important part. Okay, so that's about the how will you do performance testing in dashboard. Next question was, you know, like a scenario question. He said that, you know, if a Tableau is your Tableau report is running slow, how will you identify where the problem is? Again, for that, first step would be recording Tableau performance and identifying where is it taking time? Is it in running your queries? Is it in computing your calculations or is it in, you know, your design part? 
so you have to analyze that part and based on that you have to take decision okay so that is something that we can talk about in this question okay so i think that's it uh from my side in this video i think you have uh, if you found this video useful don't forget to like share and comment see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day